Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me on the Markets Recap Show. We have some exciting things today. Oh, you know what? I don't think I pushed save on uh, the rundown. So it's the third or fourth on the, on the top there. You can probably find it there, Neil. And uh, then we'll get that rundown going. It looks like a, do you know what it looks like? Black and blue little thing there. All right, so we do have CrowdStrike coming up. So as soon as that gets hit, we will bring CrowdStrike to everybody coming through very, very soon. Uh, and there it is. Yes, sir. So we will have a nice sector recap. We had Bitcoin and iBit. I actually wanted to call it Bitcoin uh, here as well on Binance for spot BTC. But uh, decent move to the downside here today. And here we go with crypto. It looks like it's trying to bounce a little bit. 62 right now, 62.1. So crypto markets to the downside a little bit here just recently on a nice move as we break through all-time highs today and then fade out a bit. So I feel like that's kind of like, you know, as expected there. We do have CrowdStrike out right now, so we're going to have a quick look at what CrowdStrike is doing. I'm not seeing any movements yet on Crowd. Uh, looks like they are, the, no, the note that I have about CrowdStrike right here is actually an acquisition uh, right now to acquire Flow Security to expand its cloud security leadership. So we'll find out about that. Raw stores now out as well. So uh, Gap 182 versus 165, that's a beat. A beat on sales as well, R-O-S-T. Let's go figure out what's going on with Rost. So a nice move upside, now fading back out. Uh, we have over here, the yearly. So right now we are up 10.5% on the year. You switch it up and you're going to see nice movement to the high side right now for Rost. But as you can see, a nice little move down to 149 here in the after hours. We will check out CrowdStrike as well to see if that's doing anything here in that, oops, CRWD, not CRWDT. I'm surprised, not really moving around. I don't really see anything on CrowdStrike coming out yet. Yeah, we will have Brian Shannon on the show this afternoon. That should be good. So right now, the only story I have on CrowdStrike is that they are acquiring this flow security right now. So there it is right there, not out anything else yet. We did have a good report today, of course, and we'll keep Benzinga up there. So if I see it, I'll, I'll, I'll get that to you ASAP. We did have a good report today. Ooh, I guess this is a little bit, is my head getting cut off there or what? Uh, there it is. As Oh yeah, Ramin's by herself here today. So let's wait uh, to see if that happens. FXI today, not a great little move to the downside as we did see some movement on Apple to the downside with weaker than expected iPhone sales possibly coming out of China there. You can see we had a nice downside push in Apple all day. Even from the open here for Apple, we'll zoom out a little bit. We actually had some 172s upside there on Apple, faded it out all day. Closing at 170, there's a lot of traders. If we flip it over to the daily chart here, you're going to see there's a lot of traders that are excited about these levels. So watch out for 166 coming through possibly as a potential bottom. I could see that hitting maybe tomorrow for Apple. Nice move to the downside. Oh, one thing I wanted to show you, I thought this was pretty cool too. We, we use this on the main show. And it was just, maybe we can get off my, yeah, get, get me out of here and we can see what the worst case scenarios are here. Microsoft down three, Google down 0.73, so bad. But Apple wasn't down as much as Softy today. So I feel like, although we don't have too many headlines about Microsoft, uh, that's interesting to me. Amazon as well. So a lot of these big names. You know, also Caterpillar down 1.6. That's interesting. UNH can't seem to get off the uh, blocks as well. So some of these Dow component names today with UNH to the downside, newly instated Amazon into the Dow downside. Obviously, Microsoft and Apple to the downside as well. Eli Lilly. So not a great day for some of these high-flying names. There's my guy over there right there with... Uh, Uber as well, down 3%. So yeah, some damage being done across the board today in some big names. So it actually looks like right now Nordstrom's is out. So JWN now out, down 6.5 on this. Look at Nordstrom's, not as great as everything else, but you could see here, it looks like it was a beat though, but they're pulling back real nice here in Nordstrom's, pulling back in into 19 and a half. So there's Nordstrom's on the daily, up 12 and a half percent year to date, but definitely pulling back right now, Nordstrom's on the one minute chart, uh, $20 right now, looking around. We'll see where the bottom's gonna be. Uh, let me just reverse this out a little bit. So the 200 period is nine, or sorry, the 50 period is $19. 200 period down here. I don't know, I gotta find out what is this uh, that we've marked down there. Oh, we'll do this after. Okay, uh, CrowdStrike, I think that is out as well. Uh, CrowdStrike up 14, so here we go. CrowdStrike looks like it says no to anybody thought it was going the other way. 
CrowdStrike right now up 14, actually up $23 now, 7.5% goes CrowdStrike upside. But look at the daily. Where are we on CrowdStrike on the daily? So this is putting us right back up here. See if we can zoom in. Uh, no, no, zoom the other way. Oh, no. Uh, right up to the upside right now, taking that down. 337 for CrowdStrike. That's right where we are right now, 338. So we are starting to take out some highs here on CrowdStrike. So good little number being reported there. There it is. This is the weekly. Doesn't get any better than where we are right now. CrowdStrike, bang it. Nice little move upside for Crowd. And here's the number. So let's have a quick look. CrowdStrike right now beating EPS, 95 beating 82. Take a drink. Sales beating, so beating on the top and the bottom for CrowdStrike. So we'll just wait to see where we go from here. Nice move to the upside on CrowdStrike. We did talk about watching out for a fade. It did fade in today, but it only got back into this 281. There it goes, man. CrowdStrike with a nice beat back up to the upside and continuously going. So there's the daily chart on CrowdStrike, taking it out. This is what we look like right now. Wow, crowd up 40% and ripping. This is a huge move, man. Congratulations to CrowdStrike. We talked about the implied move on this. The implied move was 13.5%. Will you take a triple? Yes or no? Up 33% right now. Huge move upside for CrowdStrike. Congratulations, anybody that's here with me. What's up to Rivercrat? Ma Monty G coming through. Uh, cooler hand here. Wisey's here. David Moore, Joe Schmo. A lot of traders here looking at CrowdStrike. Back up to the upside. So it's a nice little beat for them. JWN, we talked about Nordstrom's up as well, man. Uh, no, no, Nordstrom's pulling back in a little bit. Let me just flip this over because we have a daily chart right now. One minute on JWN downside. So my bad there on JWN downside. Ross Stores was another big one that we're looking at. Up and down, kind of flat on Ross. But the big one that everyone's looking at is Crowd. So let's go over and have a look at some of the other names that are included with CrowdStrike, including our favorite Pan W. I'm assuming this is a nice, yes, sir. There's Pan W up eight bucks. Right now in the after hours is Pan W starting to climb a little bit higher right now. So, all right, some of the sectors to look at today. Again, NASDAQ not with a great move, man. The XLK continues to get hit. XLK down 2.3%. The one that we really look at that follows the NASDAQ are the triple Qs. So down 1.64%. But again, a little bit of a bump up here in the after hours on the NASDAQ. Just kind of putting us to where we were at the highs uh, earlier on today for the NASDAQ back into there. So up 10% on the year for the NQs. We talked about possibly buying some weakness into the NASDAQ. For me, maybe it would be SMH. We talked about getting something out maybe on NVIDIA or on AMD as we continue to move higher and higher and higher on these names. But if SMH can pull back, I feel a little bit safer uh, about that right now. But here's the thing for CrowdStrike that's really getting it bouncing, I guess. CrowdStrike sees forward 25 EPS in the 377 to 397 range, crushing the bottom. The bottom's 375. So they're saying that the estimate, their bottom is now higher than where the street is. So that is a banger. And you have to put in your own calculations here as how far CrowdStrike can go. But again, revenues, wow, revenues. This is what we're talking about. For a growth name, this is exactly what you're talking about. You want better revenues, right? The profit will come. It's the revenues. Work on getting people into your system, into your platform, into your universe. CrowdStrike doing that. Look at this. Crowds, uh-oh. Oh, I thought this was going to be Chipotle Mexican Grill announcing a split, but no. First quarter results, April 24th. But there's CrowdStrike. First ever uh, reported better than expected Q4 earnings and a nice upbeat. So there it is right now. CrowdStrike still continuing to go higher. Uh, wow, 347, man. CrowdStrike up huge. We'll talk to, uh, I was gonna say, we'll talk to Michael Noss. We'll talk to Brian Shannon coming up really soon. If you can grab me that book back there, Adara, my bad. Uh, she brought it to me the other day or the other minute there. CrowdStrike, nice move to the upside the other day. Hello, what day is it right now? Apple, a little bit worried about that. Here's the book right here. Anchored VWAT, maximum trading. We're gonna talk to Brian Shannon very, very soon about that. 
all of us that are a little bit worried about Apple, this is why, man, you're down 6.8. If we can get my ugly mug off there, that'd be good. 6.8% on the year for Apple. We actually, we're going to go through this a little bit earlier. What's up with Sean's tweets? Let's just go down a little bit. I'm going to talk about this. This is not the segment, okay? This is what's up with Sean's tweets. But thank you to Adara for this because she tweeted this and showed me this. Look at this. This right now, all right, here, let's call this up. These are the enormous, enormous eight. We got Eli Lilly in here. What's the enormous eight? Oh, they put the S&P in here. Okay, uh, that's fine. So they actually have Netflix in there. So good call right there. So Netflix. So look at this. Returns to date right here on the enormous eight. All right. Obviously, we should be including Netflix. Not enough love for that. NVIDIA. This is year total returns as of... Oh, data via charts as of. So that's, this is enormous eight. Is this, this is year, right? Yeah, 2024 return. So year to date returns. So you're talking about two months and a bit. Yeah, shrink me, right? There we go. We need shrunk out here. I like that. Maybe I know, I'm on Ozempic here as we're getting shrunk out here uh, on the side. But it's NVIDIA 72%. It's Meta 41%. You got Netflix 26, Amazon. But look at the red ones here. Google, Apple, which we know about, and Tesla. That Apple number must be wrong because we just have Apple down 0 0.3 or 0.6. But anyways, that I just want to take that to you. Go find me over there on um, X because, again, pretty important as we get looking uh, for community. Go find us, me and Brian Shannon, all over X. Okay, Uranium. Oh, you know which name I wanted to get involved with that I'm not? I, I am involved. I'm involved in XL, um, XLV which is the healthcare ETF. But one name that I think that we might have mixed here, XBI, so this is the biotech, right? The thing about this is we're always gonna talk about AI. I'm getting this out of my ear because there's really no more earnings coming through. The thing about um, XLV is those are good names. We have UNH, some of the healthcare names, which I think is using, again, a, every business is using AI. So let me not get that twisted. But the thing about the biotechs, look at this breakout here. I was looking at IBB, and it's very, very similar. They haven't broke out as much, but this XBI, and I'm going to go find out tomorrow what the weight, I mean, I can, there's a way that I can find out the weightings, and I had it up on the other side, uh, but right, uh, probably on that trading view one, uh, but anyways, we're using trade ideas. This has sort of broken out off the top here, and I know my guest, Brian Shannon, is going to talk a little bit about biotechs. He always does. There's some names that he likes in this, but look at the weekly chart. You want to talk about something that could break out even more. Obviously, we had a huge run up during COVID, you know, with everyone getting into biotech names. Pfizer right now is at a pathetic level, man, 26 bucks. Like, I'm going to blast out of Pfizer and go right into XBI, trying to take this out. I said I wanted to see what was on here. So what do I have? Oh, this is the 200 uh, period SMA. Well, that one, my friend, should be green. Uh, right here. So let me go set this live. You're seeing this happen live uh, right now. Obviously, this will push OK. And I do not... Uh, oh, wait a second. Uh, it does not change that. All right, I'm going to have to get into this. I don't even want this. We're going to remove that. There we go. Now we have it. OK, save. All right. Uh, so this is what we're talking about. It's at the 200 period moving average right now and finally starting to break out. This is, of course, on the weekly chart. So I'm liking XBI here. If we move this over, look at this. So we're right at a level that I feel like here now for biotech names, Moderna's, the Eli Lilly's, the Bristol Myers of the world here on XBI. So I really like this breakout. And I think I'm going to ask Brian about this when he comes through. What about XBI? Because this looks like it's going to be a little good, of, little good break out there on the weekly. On the daily for XBI, we're well off on that one. So we're well up, up and away on that. But I think XBI has a good chance to go, especially as we get more and more talk about, again, biotech names coming through. There's so much love here. Look at Eli Lilly. I mean, how much do we need to talk about this name just blasting up and up and away, right? So there's going to be the new generation of biotech names. And I know CRISPR Therapeutics is one that Brian's really liked. So I'm hoping that he can help me out here with a little bit of XBI love uh, coming through. And I apologize because on trade, I have a new layout on trade ideas, but we can normally break it out to see where the sectors are. But I do have uh, this trading view sector here. And if you go over and have a quick look, communication, industrial, industrial, transportation, energy, and consumers, watch, it's not gonna be here, here, health technology. So this is exactly what we're talking about. Eli Lilly, I mean, 
We love that name. Ab V, right? Merck, uh, Timo Fisher. There's going to be a lot of great names. Abbott Labs. Uh, here's Pfizer. Pfizer today got a bounce up because, again, Josh Brown um, on CNBC came in there, was talking up his Pfizer, or not his Pfizer position, but I think it was making, and again, you have to check the news source, but a new position uh, that he was trying to build in for Pfizer. But look at this on the daily chart. Pfizer has been, I mean, unless there's some sort of a catalyst coming through for Pfizer, I don't really see anything here for this name. So, I mean, maybe we can call out a weekly on Pfizer to see how low exactly we are on this name. Oh, where's my throw up key? I need a throw up key on here. Uh, we don't have one because that's pretty disgusting, but we'll just slap a fail. Everything's all good. I got it over here. Oh, there's a chat that might open up here. You want me to turn this over to you? We're getting all ready. Ramina is uh, by her lonesome here today as Fabian had to bolt out there uh, at the end of the day. So bear with us as we will get Brian Shannon coming through very, very soon. But anyways, Pfizer to the downside. Um, interesting name here. I feel like over 3,100 watching, first of all. Bang, thank you so much for that. 417 coming in right now. Uh, but yeah, Pfizer on the weekly just looks pretty sick. We're going to have to wait to hear if there's a catalyst for this name. I want to buy Pfizer. But I like the name. It's a household name now, thanks to the shot. Everybody knows that. There was a little blue pill that made this name famous as well, but now that can be off-branded. So anyways, Pfizer to the down to Viagra. I don't know why I said that. I mean, you just call it what it is. Uh, but there it is, a nice little downside move there for Pfizer. Feel like we're getting into a level where we might want to buy that name, so possibly coming through for Pfizer. Quickly on CrowdStrike before I call my friend Brian, let me know. Uh, Ramin, when he's all good, he is all good. Okay, so let me just check out CrowdStrike just real quickly before I throw over to Brian because I know there's a lot of love for that one. Wow, $346. Okay, it's Trader Talk. Let's go. All right, Mr. Brian Shannon, we finally had a little bit of a pullback uh, in the markets today. Catch you by surprise or is that something that we've been looking for? Um, not totally by surprise. I mean, this whole rally has uh, seemed like it could, could pull back at any moment. Right. Yesterday, I had a uh, subscriber webinar for Alpha Trends, and what I had pointed out was we had two stocks in the last week that had doubled. Uh, you know, two little stocks, they doubled. That's signs of frothiness. Some of our other stocks have been getting stopped out. We're raising stops. New ideas were harder to find for long swing trades yesterday, and we actually entered a new swing trade short yesterday. So I kind of put all that together and said, you know, this is the message of the market. It's telling us something here. It's not just some esoteric um, seasonality type thing right. where we have to be aware. This is the market actually speaking to us. So, I mean, I didn't expect it to gap down today and then sell off uh, as hard as it did, but uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me. And in fact, I hope that we see further downside just to kind of let this market catch its breath a little bit. Um, here's the tweet that you're talking about here, Brian. So I want everyone to go follow you at Alpha Trend. So if we show this up right now, here's Brian Shannon from last night. Go find it out. Market feedback. Whoops, uh, this is me and you talking there. Uh, so there it is. We'll go find that out. Um, just talking about some market sentiment and some ideas that we want to talk about. So at Alpha Trends, go find Mr. Brian Shannon. And everyone's saying, here he is. He's the man, the myth, the legend. That is right. We have you live right now. All right. You've made some great sort of looks for Anchored View Up, and we actually talked about Anchored View Up on the show today as some of our traders uh, in the floor behind me are now starting to use the Anchored View Up. So thank you again uh, for sending a couple of copy here. Maximum trading gains. This is making its way around the floor. A lot of traders like that. So shout out to everybody. They can go find that on Amazon and go over to your Twitter for more information there. But what about CrowdStrike? That kind of blew it out. We were looking for a 13% move or so. Uh, Brian, we're getting 33%. Looks like it's up, up and away on CrowdStrike. Um, anything technically here? Will you trade a name like this tomorrow? Anything on CrowdStrike? Most likely I won't trade it, Sean. I'm not much of a news type of trader. I like to look for my you know, setups where I feel like I have an edge and the, uh, there's not so much competition. Now, it doesn't mean I wouldn't trade it 100 per, you know, percent if there's nothing else going on and there's a lot of action on this and I had some intraday VWAP levels. I might give it a try if I was bored, but uh, uh, most likely not. Um, okay, so I was just getting a note from Brendan there about some earnings plays. But yeah, I don't, for me, I'm the kind of the same way. And actually, there's something that you taught me that I've used a lot with uh, earnings plays. And that was when there's a gap, play the return 
to, of course, VWAP. So we'll, we'll right. watch. Is it VWAP or VWAP? I mean, is it just a matter of throwing, uh, you know, do you, you know, okay. It's the most useful tool in technical analysis. That's all you need to That's know. That's all you need oh, to know. Who cares does. how you pronounce it, man? Who cares about that? Uh, but yeah, okay, so interesting move there. Look, one other name that I think is going to lead the market down, it was interesting to me today to see Microsoft leading the way, but Apple is what I kind of want to talk about with you uh, real quick right now. So maybe if we can call something up because Apple, there's a lot of traders right now, especially um, some that are more looking at trying to pick up something from value standpoint, um, where they know is a leader of the pack. So a lot of people looking at Apple, Microsoft, Google, obviously some of these names are starting to lose themselves a little bit. Apple down now, we have it listed as a down about 6% on the year. I think it's down a little bit more than that. Um, Tesla's down as well. But it, I mean, just zooming out here, we have October lows. I feel like that's a decent spot to start looking at it. But I'm gonna ask you from an anchored side of things, are we looking down here at these January lows? If we do, where, where does that take us? Um, I could just apply my own anchored view up right here and probably be able to get this answer. Yep. Right there, hey, there it is, we did it. We did it live on the show, baby. Uh, and we're looking at about a 172. So let me give it over to you, uh, the godfather of said um, technical indicator. Let's go look at the anchored view up from Brian Shannon's standpoint. Sure, we're gonna see the same exact thing here on this weekly chart that you just showed. There's the anchor from the beginning of 2023, which happened to be the low of uh, that move as well. And we had bounced from this right here here, here, and now today we're through it. Now that doesn't mean it might not close the week right at that level. What I would really prefer to see, Sean, is that we would come down and undercut that low from October that you were just mentioning. If we were to take a slight undercut under there, I think you would capture a lot of uh, new short sellers on the breakdown, which is highly uneducated, which is why right. they'd likely get squeezed. But you would also have, I think, a lot of stops from long holders under there saying, enough's enough, I'm getting out of this thing. And after that happens, we often see that's where the bounce will materialize. And then how much of a bounce is anyone's guess? But you know, the odds aren't very good. We've got a declining 10, 20, 30, 40 week moving average. It's in a downtrend. It's in a bearish trend right now. And it's not something that I personally would be interested in looking at, especially when you look at the shorter term timeframes and you see it's just been awful, uh, you know, yeah. downtrend with this declining five day moving average. It hasn't been able to break above it. Uh, except for a brief movement over here. But if you used a stop, you would have been out of that one quickly. Yeah, so we, I'm going to ask if there's any questions in the chat. We will, we will talk about that. But I'm with you on that, Apple. I feel like uh, it's a little too tough uh, to look to try to catch these falling swords right now or knives. I guess not really too much of a sword. Do we have enough information to start looking at some of these Bitcoin ETFs? I mean, I'm just looking back. We only go back to about September here uh, for some of these, like iBit making the move all the way to the up. This is the one that I kind of like. I guess we don't go back to the, that's, that's old information. But I feel like we just came out in January with some of these ETFs. So um, there it is. It's this first day here on iBit. Um, you know, we had a nice little move down on Bitcoin today. You can look at MSTR or, you know, different names like that. But maybe today we're starting to get a little bit of a pullback in BTC. Um, is there anything that you're looking at as maybe from an iBit standpoint? I'm not going to ask you about Kathy Wood's Arc B because we know about your opinions there. So do we have enough information now that we can go back and start to use things like a VWAP or something like that for support in the Bitcoin space? Yeah, if you recall, I mean, maybe three or four weeks ago, Sean, when I was on here, we did look at the iBit uh, right. uh, ETF, and I've got that up on my screen right now. And we were talking about it because I was calling it a buy right over here at that circle as we got back above the anchor from the inception of these ETFs. Right. If you recall, that was the exact prior high in Bitcoin spot. And we kind of messed around with that. We broke a higher high right here. So I think that now the most you can look at or well there's two levels here we can put an anchor off of this move which we closed above today um, but if we were to see a little bit further pullback which i would love to see is maybe maybe we look at this gap and tomorrow we kind of come up get trapped underneath that volume weighted average price come down here and then come to this next level i think somewhere in that 33 and a half would be a really nice level uh, for it to pull back to that might start to make sense to look around for the possibility of uh, you know some support in there 
Okay, good, good one there. We have a question. Um, yeah, I look, I, I, I like Bitcoin. I think that we're going to have the halving, so I need to figure that out a little bit. We're going to have Crypto Burb on to discuss that a little bit with us. Oh, as perfect guy, well. yeah. Yeah, oh, you know Adrian? Oh, yeah, we talked about this. You know Adrian. Adrian yeah. yeah, great guy there, Adrian Zadinchuk. He's going to be coming on. We'll talk about that with him. And then the Ethereum ETF launch, hopefully coming in the summer, another little bit of a catalyst to come through right there. Do you mind looking at Pan W? So that's Palo Alto. So I'll, if you come over to my screen, I'll give you a second to try to load that up. In my books, we had a great bounce off of 260. I know people in the chat are probably like, oh man, we always talk about Palo Alto, but in CrowdStrike earnings today, we are getting a little bit of a relief rally in this name. So it was hit, was coming back down. A lot of traders were a little worried about this. We had the Pelosi bug in this as well. Apparently she's all over some of the right. calls. Uh, so that went up to 325 there, which is the 50 period moving average. I'm still a buyer. I really like the space, um, but was hit down. Look at this move up in the aftermarket on some nice CrowdStrike news. So good move upside right there. Are we in a little bit of trouble? What is there to worry about here from what you can see on Pan W? I'm still buying more if we get back into 260. Yeah, I mean, 260. That, and, you know, that bounce came right at the 200-day moving average here on the left. Yeah. You can see uh, it struck it perfectly, and that's where... Uh, Mr. Pelosi struck his call options, which turned out to be a great move. And unfortunately, the way it works out is the market found out about the call options over here. They chased it and then it's been selling off subsequently. So, you know, we're right back to the anchor from the gap lower. And this is a level that should hold his support. And it has so far. On the upside, though, a couple concerning things. One, the anchor off of that peak is right here. That's that purple line. The green line is the year-to-date anchored volume weighted average price. And then you have a declining five-day moving average. So I kind of think it's not going to just shoot higher from here, Sean. But what's more likely is maybe we pull back a little bit, consolidate, and then are able to get going. And, and then we could you know, buy some strength over here with a stop under a higher low somewhere around this level. It's possible it could do this, but I think that the second scenario I drew in is more likely. Yeah, and that's the thing. I just want to make sure that everyone understands. And I, I mean, I get it from your book as well. And that is that when we're talking about technical indicators and levels of support, they're really just areas of interest. I mean, as right. we continue to look at them, you have to see how they trade around there and then put your stops according. Because I know that you and I have, again, talked many, many times on the show and risk management. I mean, you could be a trader, that's great. Anybody could sit in here and hit keys. But if you're not gonna spend time looking at charts and actually analyzing some levels, then I really feel like you're throwing darts. Um, and you know, I know for you, maybe we could talk a little bit about that. When, when did you finally maybe get fed up looking at all these technical indicators and then decide to really just focus on VWAP? Was there a time where you were sort of, because for me, that's, it's happening right now, where I just look at yeah. a few moving averages, look at VWAP and kind of just say, you know what, RSI, some stuff. They're great to look at once you get into it. But I just feel like there's some very basic things that we have to learn first. When did that happen in your trading career? Sean, I'm like anybody else who, you know, as soon as I started, you know, I would read about a new indicator or an old indicator to be new to me, the RSI, the MACD, whatever. And I would spend hours tearing it apart, right. looking at what drives it and then looking at chart after chart after chart and being convinced it was the magic oscillator indicator. And I found that with oscillators and indicators, they're all great. They're they're all. I mean, even the 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 volume weighted average price. It's all hindsight. Right. Um, so we have to look at what matters most. Price matters most. Only price pays. What we're looking at with the volume weighted average price is price first and for foremost. Volume, which gives us the emotional intensity of how committed a crowd is to a move. And then time, we have to measure it from, you know, everyone has a different time frame. Right. The anchor from from the move lower in PANW. So far, it's being defended in this general area. The anchor from the year-to-date high, is that going to become resistance? So we look at those to frame our potential trade and wait for the evidence on a shorter-term time frame. It's time to take that action, manage risk, and then the rest is up to the market. 
Mr. Brian Shannon, I like the facial hair that you got going on there. I like that. Is that a new move? That's you noticed, yeah. Yeah, of course yeah, I noticed, yeah. man. It looks good. You look like, uh, was it Heisenberg there from uh, Breaking Bad? I like that look. I like that look. Um, all right. There's a lot of white in there, though, Sean. That's the thing. Oh, it's, there's a lot of white. Yeah, I thought you talking whiter. about mine there, too. Don't, don't cover it up uh, right now. Look, Brian Chan, they can follow you at Alpha Trends. They can they go can. find you over there. Head over to X. Go find this handsome man. I talked about it. Let's get you to 300,000, baby. Nice, nice amount of followers there congratulations on that and there it is right now anybody that needs to find out about the anchored vwap we got a little anchor emoji there if that's what those are called that's pretty cool go find it on amazon brian shannon thank you so much again for coming on the show you always add so much color to some of these uh indicators and i want to thank you for that thank you sean have a good day everyone ciao see ya that's brian shannon go find him All right, look, today we absolutely nailed a few things. And I mean, um, we'll, we'll, we'll look at trading just real, real quick. The one thing I want to talk about is, as we'll go down, hold on a second, topic next. I'll do this, topic next, topic next. All right, Sean's tweets. So let's just actually, ha ha, topic previous. There it is. All right, sticky note is what I wanted, actually. Uh, right there, let's just zoom down real quick. Here's a sticky note from today. So um, I'll move this over a little bit so we can all see it. It was basically the Apple short that we really liked. We came in, we saw our watch list. The best resource you could get is watchlist.tradertv.live. Talks about Apple. Apple is starting to lead the way. We saw Apple break through 180 yesterday. We liked the short here today. We talked all about it. Easy level here to look at. If we rip past 175 anyways, there's more explanations there. iPhone sales down 24%. We like that one. We also like the AMD short here, 204, 205. We like the Amazon long and the Palantir long. So let's just review some of these trades. These two top ones, Apple and AMD, the two top names there. Amazon was actually a really good name as well for us. This is just real quick, just to talk about why it's important to have a bias. Unfortunately, guys, I can't, there's nothing I can do here about anything. Oh, this sucks, okay. Uh, yeah, all right, well, we have these crazy wicks here. But we talked about it here on the stick. You know what, I just wanna say real quick, we said here, um, fade it. So keep fading pops, okay? So that's, look what happened off the open. Apple really ripped up here. It ripped right in the 200 period. And our out was gonna be 172 and change. The thing is, it just kept on going. It gave us the shorts, then it cranked back in. Taking a dollar, a dollar and change as we start to fade out. Everything purple are shorts. We get another VWAP short. Shout out to my guy, Brian, who's just here. There's a VWAP short. There's more VWAP shorts right here again. We got stopped out there before, unfortunately. Let me just zoom this back out just a little bit to show you what we did to close. More shorts, more shorts. Nice movement in. So again, stay net the opinion that you have until something changes. Market was heading to the downside. I was not getting out of this Apple short until we took VWAP. That didn't happen. Then AMD, we said short into 204, 205. Look what we did right here. I mean, what else can we possibly do? These shorts is into 204, 205, then bang to the downside. We had a great trading day and I hope you did as well. Thank you so much. Over 2,600 of you still with us. Over 3,500 to start. I like that. So we're gonna do a little bit of roll call. Thank you so much for joining, man. Traders stay late. And those of you that are here, it's roll call time. A big Shout out to Bears vs. Bulls. We couldn't do this without you. Shout out to Ramin as well, um, helping out here at the end of the day. So there it is. Shout out. Here, let's go. Shout out to Ritz, Bora Hunt, Mr. Memes is here, Monty G is here, Andrew's here, Joe Schmo is here, Tom's Trades. Um, again, thank you so much for everybody today as well. As I can see all these just flying in. The internet was a problem today along, across many, many websites. Thank you so much for staying with us with YouTube. We're not done yet, Ramin. Here, let's go. Uh, what's up to Darren here, Nick Free, Alt Styles. What's up, man? What's up to Rich Naples? I like that. Hey, Mr. Westermeyer, I heard about the uh, Sally Up, Sally Down challenge. So Neil's going to do that, and we're going to get a new uh, Magic 8-Ball. Shout out to that one. What's up to Joe Schmo? What's up to Jimmy Joe Smith? What's up to Ponzi Fonzi if you're here? That guy always wants to shout out. Compass, RX, and everybody else. Look, join us all back tomorrow at 8.30. I'll be here. Neil will be here. Brett will all be here. Join us tomorrow at 8.30. Just make sure you're here. That's the important thing. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Go find the podcast, man. We had another great podcast. Do you guys tip at Starbucks? Go find the podcast. Go find us there on Twitter. Myself and Brendan, great conversations had by all. Check us out at Trader TV, Sean, at Instagram, with Instagram as well, at Trader TV Live on Instagram and Twitter. I'll see everybody tomorrow. Ciao.